In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Today is the second week of our preparation for Great and Holy Lent. As I mentioned last week in my sermon, and it's during this time that we're given a different gospel story each and every week that illustrates for us where our focus should be during this time of preparation. And if you remember last week, we heard the story of the publican and the Pharisee, where we learned that it's in humility that we can and do come to know God. And it's in that story where we learn the Jesus prayer from the publican who beat his chest in the temple, it says, and said, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. So in this past week, our focus as Christians should have been on arming ourselves with the virtue of humility and struggling on how we can apply that virtue to our lives on a daily basis. And then today, we heard the very familiar long gospel of the prodigal son, a story that speaks to us about repentance, and a story that speaks to us about love, and a story that speaks to us about the truth regarding freedom, freedom that God gives to each and every single one of us because of His love for us. It's the story of a very wealthy and extremely loving father who willingly and compassionately received his son back home after that son had literally destroyed the family name by giving a disgraceful and living a despicable way of life, a way of life that would make no family proud. And it's a story about the man's older son who became jealous of his father's love for the prodigal son and was angry with his father because he couldn't understand how his father could accept back into the family his younger brother who did nothing but bring disgrace and dishonor to the entire family. And so the gospel says that this older son refused to welcome his younger brother when his father decided to throw a celebration for him when he returned. And it's at the end of the gospel, in the father's response to that older son, where we find that true meaning of freedom, of God's freedom, the freedom that God gives to us that I mentioned earlier. The father says to his son at the end, and I'm paraphrasing a little bit, son, it's true that your brother left us and failed miserably out in the world on his own. And it's true that your father lost everything, including all his money and all his dignity and all his honor, and that he shamed the family name but please do not be angry with me and do not judge me. Because, and the last sentence of the gospel says this, your brother was lost, but now he is found. Your brother was dead, but now he is alive again. This, he said to his older son, is why we must celebrate now. And he invited him to come and join the festivities. And so, every year, when we hear this story of the prodigal son, it should, re it should remind us that even, it was, even though it was told close to 2,000 years ago by Jesus Christ himself in that parable, it could very well be the story of any modern-day family. Because like the younger son in the parable, what this son was really looking for 
when he decided to take his inheritance early and leave his family and venture out into the world on his own was nothing less than his own total independence and his total freedom. Not only from his father and from everything he knew, but from his entire family and community as well. Just like many of the young people out in the world seem to want to do today, because they feel entitled for some reason nowadays, or they feel privileged for some reason, or maybe they're spoiled enough to where they're even just plain ungrateful. And it might not totally be their fault, because we live in a modern day world that entices us, I think, on a daily basis with the kind of freedom that appeals to and feeds our innermost passions. The passion for more money, you can never have enough. The passion for more power, and we're always trying to climb higher. The passion for more beauty, and we, so we go visit our doctor. And the passion for more independence. And this is exactly the kind of freedom that the young son in the parable was after when he sought to break ties with his family. Away from the watchful eye of his father and of his family, he could indulge himself in any kind of life he wanted, no matter how unmoral or no matter how depraved that lifestyle may be. He was looking for a life that had no need for self-discipline or accountability to anyone except himself. And he defined that way of life as freedom. And unfortunately, this also seems to be how our modern day society also defines freedom. But what happened to this young man in the gospel was that he soon found himself not free at all, but rather enslaved and imprisoned by the very freedom that he was seeking. Much like maybe a drug addict or an alcoholic becomes when they are so caught up in their way of life that they become imprisoned by the chemicals that they use, which doesn't free them from their problems, but actually becomes the problem itself. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, our society, I think, is feeding us a great and terrible lie. And we need to be aware of this lie, especially the, this millennial generation or the next generation. The very worldly freedoms that so many of us get caught up in desiring for our lives, wealth and power and status and independence and success, is not freedom at all on their own, but a trap that possibly can and possibly does destroy lives if we're not aware of it. But at one point in the gospel lesson that we heard this morning, it says that the young man, that younger son, the prodigal son, in the midst of his loose living tirade, he had an awakening, it said, or he had an epiphany, or it says that he came to himself, or that he came to his senses, and he realized that the very freedom that he was seeking had really only changed, chained him to his own desires, and that he actually had no freedom at all. It was only after losing everything, every possession that he was given, all his money, and all his clothing, and all his food, 
and his family and all his friends and his health and even his dignity that he came to realize that everything he actually ever wanted and actually everything that he really ever needed was not to be found in separation from his father and from his family and from his community, but rather in the presence of and in the comfort of those who had always loved and cared for him. Or in other words, he came to the realization that before he had ever even left home, he already had possessed all the true freedom that he so much desired to find out there in the world. And he realized then that he already had everything that he needed to become the person that he thought he wanted to be. And so this is why Jesus spoke this parable of the prodigal son. And this is why the story is read every year on the second Sunday of preparation towards Great and Holy Lent. Jesus wants us to understand and to fully know the truth about what it means to be free. He wants us to know that we were created to be free. He wants us to know that even though, some, though sometimes we may fall into sin and become separated ourselves from God, that God is always lovingly waiting to receive us back into full communion with Him, fully restoring our relationships with Him through the death and the resurrection of His only begotten Son. So the message of the story of the prodigal son, the truth about what is being revealed in that story, is that God is nothing less than a forgiving God. And God is nothing less than a loving God. A God who loves unconditionally. A God who receives a repentant sinner without hesitation. And a God who offers to us nothing less than total and unconstrained freedom. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we're in the midst of this preparation time for another couple weeks before we enter into Great and Holy Lent. And it really should be a time for personal intervention, just like this prodigal son had. And it should be a time for us to do maybe a kind of personal spring cleaning of both our heart and our soul and our mind. It's a time for us to be humble and to practice humility. And it's a time for us to repent and to practice forgiveness. And it's a time for us to also seek renewal with our God. And according to the Gospel lesson this morning, it's also a time for us to focus in on what it means as human beings to truly become free. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.